Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dumpling Show, where I talk to interesting, exciting Cardano projects. And today I am talking to a special guest. He is the founder of Maladex, a DEX on Cardano, and his name is Yarek. Yarek, welcome and thank you for talking to me. Thank you for having me. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you, Yarek. The reason I wanted to talk to the founder of Maladex is that upon reading their mission statement, I was Wow, it is so exciting. It's extremely ambitious. So let's start with introducing to the audience in very basic, simple terms. What does Maladex do? Maladex connects investors to the way of investment in the shortest term. So you can think of it like in the simple term, like a DEX, but actually it's going to do much more. So you have exposure to indexes, you have exposure to synthetics, which may represent, you know, like assets on the different chains, on the actual stock market. Uh, you will have exposure to passive investment. And then uh, the active one may be actually like implementing the strategies that as you would see in the actual hedge fund. And last but not least, it provides you the means to construct your own investment strategy. So for example, if you want to do DCA. So you, you should think of Maladex, like to t long didn't read, as a very sound way for you to invest. Very important for us is that there is no impairment loss. Uh, I can talk about it later. Yeah. That... Okay, got it. So it sounds like people cannot only use the traditional Cardano DEXs, like, you know, Sunday swap to swap coins. They can also mm -hmm. use Maladex to do traditional investments, like, you know, the indexes. When you mm -hmm. say synthetics, to explain to the audience what you meant is like mirroring of a real life asset like Tesla stocks. And they can even trade it with your DEX. Is that correct? Absolutely. And uh, what's also excited about indexes is uh, those can be also crypto indexes. Uh, DeFi projects on Cardano we may have an index that tracks that. If I you know, like with the NFT popularity, uh, we can have an index that tracks uh, different collections. Everybody who owns a share of index wants you know, like a share of the NFT. And you could sort of pull it with people and you own part of an ANSIG, like an index. Exactly. That's but crazy. That is not, <laughs> that's true. Okay, thank you. So for those who are not super familiar with DEXs, can you in very simple terms explain to people, maybe you can list out, here are the following ways you could make money on Maladex. Sure. So the first one is obviously market making, also called liquidity providing. It means that you provide the liquidity to the market for other people to be able to trade. Then the second, we have a stake pool. You can earn both ADA and tokens. But then the very untraditional thing one is like a lot of people, you know, like in crypto market, don't feel comfortable with the DeFi yet, right? So we want to provide the platform for sharing investment advice, uh, the trading strategies, or just like even simple, you know, like explanation. And for everybody publishing those articles on the platform, uh, you will be basically earning uh, rewards based on the views. And there will be a feature to tip the content creators. But So the knowledge sharers, they will get paid, yes. but who is going to pay them? You will basically get an allocation of uh, MAL tokens, the same like as comes from the yacht farming. And we hope to have a healthy treasury, so like basically as the platform itself generates some revenue, okay. we'll reserve part of that, like one, two years from now, like everything goes well, like we can just like switch directly to ADA. Another one is obviously like investing in the market. So, you know, like you mm -hmm. can go, you can buy tokens, but you can also write your own programmable swap that does uh, something that you think is a good approach. Then you have the passive investment and you mentioned you know, like a couple of ways to think, like for example, like uh, indexes, then there is active one and this is a very complicated one find the future like probably two years from now but basically to create the hedge fund equivalent of strategies on the chain that are basically rebalanced multiple times a day sometimes like multiple times an hour share the code for your swaps and pay a creator a small fee for using this 0.01 percent fee right so commission the, yes exactly uh, the participants they can basically view and they see like how many people are using this program as well, so the performance, etc. And if they like it, they can use it and then create it. Okay. Just, it's you know, sort platform. of like investment advice as a service kind of thing, exactly. right? And you're a platform for people, then you sort of have this engagement and social interaction aspects of to keep the platform more alive. And that's a very nice, innovative way, more use yes. of, of a DEX. So just to recap for the audience, to make money on Maladex, obviously you have the traditional DEX ways, yield farming by liquidity provision. You could invest in markets, you know, doing options, uh, stocks, you could uh, become a content creator. You could also create investment strategies and get commissions. Does that conclude basically the ways people could make money on it? 
Uh, it's a great summary. I, I'm sure you're like in the future as the project evolves, we'll think of more ways to make fun of it. Okay, perfect. More on the details of what you said later, but mm -hmm. now I want to talk about the things that many Chinese people care the most about is the team. Like, can they trust you in general as a DEX team, especially when it comes to crypto and DeFi? So first of all, mm -hmm. I know that you are so far still anonymous. So without revealing too much info that could dox you, could you tell us about your skills, expertise to demonstrate that you have the capabilities of delivering? Sure. Uh, and by the way, like this plan to eventually go public. So, you know, like eventually I hope everyone to be able to verify what I'm saying is true. Uh, but basically, uh, I'm the founder of Maladex and my personal experience is I currently work in one of the largest investment banks uh, where I lead uh, three teams. I'm the head of platforms in algorithm trading. Then before that, I worked in Stella Securities, which is the biggest market maker in the world. Let's say you go to a New York Stock Exchange and you want to purchase a stock of Apple. Uh, there is 40% chance you are buying it from Citadel Securities because they provide so much liquidity. But uh, that's my financial exposure. Before that, uh, I've worked in Microsoft Research, designing machine learning algos to be deployed on a very big scale of data. So, not gigabytes, not terabytes, not petabytes, but uh, something of the size of exabytes. And before that, like uh, I finished master's degree uh, from the University of Edinburgh. And for people who may not be familiar, like that's basically where Phil Waller is from. So basically the big brain who is like one of the creators of Haskell, the University of Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Uh, it's, oh, it's Edinburgh, like got it. Yeah, it's a great university. On top of that, I have a second master's equivalent degree in quantity finance. And quantity finance is a very funky field because there is no proper university degree that teaches that there are like some that come close, but this is something so embedded in the actual market. So I had like the opportunity to apply the knowledge quite directly. I you know like a lot of people care a lot about the Plutus Pioneer. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to confirm I completed the first cohort. Probably that's enough of the way. If you want to say, like I said, coding when I was six. So you know, it's like uh, something dear to my heart. I cared like a lot about the centralization and uh, freedom. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yavik, that's a great background. So here's my personal curious question. You're very successful in traditional finance. So yeah. why do you want to participate in this funny internet money world? <laughs> so by the way, that's a great question. And you know, like for those people who may not be familiar, like I in the like in those companies, you often work with some of the brightest minds soak in the knowledge. And you know, like you cannot copy or slide, like they call it golden handcuffs for a reason, but you know, it's uh, like w when I do it, like I see also like a lot of issues with who has access to some issues that exist in the traditional market. Uh, my uh, personal goal and hope uh, is to fix it. And, and now we got an overview of your background, but mm -hmm. obviously you need a big team as I suppose, because you're having so much ambitious goals. So can you tell us a bit more about your other team members? Absolutely. Uh, so by the way, this is just the current state. Uh, we plan to continue growing as the project grows. We can easily hit, if you are successful, like three digit teams, like in the hundreds in the future. But at the moment, that's obviously me. Uh, I'm developer and the quant in the team. Uh, we have two developers, uh, front-end and uh, back-end, who are still working the project. And uh, just recently, you know, like we got uh, three people uh, who are uh, responsible for marketing and technical writing. And we appointed one of them recently as a CMO. I think there are six of us at the moment. We also hire on you. Upwork. Okay. Yes. But the plan is to start generating revenue soon. And as does it happen, then we can start uh, hiring from the market. Like, are you already having a very specific plan of hiring new developers and other people into your team? Yes. So I have a very specific plan on scaling that. So when we talk about like all the different uh, tracks, and it's like, like seven of them, each of those should be like an independent team of about six to nine developers. So for instance, there is no point in building indexes that would target cryptocurrencies if there are no DEXs and then tokens on the market yet. So some think, uh, things will go happen with the delay. Uh, so like the first we now implementing programmable swaps, then uh, the indexes, then the synthetics and the derivatives, then the uh, option trading. 
the plan is like to spend everything on hiring, right? So, uh, and by the way, that's what every company that just don't want to get rich quickly we should do because if you spend all the money, there is no tax to pay because you pay tax on income, right? So uh, it's hard for me to give it in numbers, but my hope would be uh, we'll be getting to 12 people by the end of the first half of the next year. Okay. Thank you. So here comes the questions for Melodix itself. I have my very big questions. The first one mm -hmm. is, you seem so comprehensive, like you want to do DeFi, but you also have many traditional finance instruments. The first thing that jumps to my mind, the concern is, what do you do about regulations? Like you said, risk assessment, risk control, and then what's the implication with KYC? What does this mean for the participants and what does it mean for you? Uh, that's a very interesting question. So uh, the regulation is highly underdefined and, you know, like if you listen to Gary Gensler, uh, you will think that everything is security. So it's, uh, so the right approach in my view is twofold, right? The first one, there are uh, certain ways to build the DeFi products that keep them away from the specific needs of compliance. Okay, so I think it's best if we divide it by two aspects. It's the front end for the users and back end what's happening with your yes. decks. So for the users, I think what they care about is, do I need KYC? From what you were saying is that it doesn't sound like they do. You have some ways to circumvent this. Is that correct? That, that's true. There's like a lot of ways to do those things. But the funny thing is, you know, like it's evolving market and sometimes like very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like we have to be careful that, that we are not breaking the law. You know, like it's a big open question, but, you know, like I think that's one of the advantages that Cardano has because Cardano has a Tala Prism. It's actually working. So for a user who's a very simple person, they just want to do liquidity provision. Can they just use it just like a DEX, like Uniswap? Absolutely. That's okay. the plan. So, okay. uh, but by the way, if uh, it would be in the investor interest that, for example, like if you do KYC, we would provide this like as additional functionality. You know, it's like um, if you have KYC, then you have also access to this one extra functionality. I see. I see. So those are the nice to have add-ons if you are willing to, you know, give your exactly. identity. I see. And do you have some kind of uh, plan or measures put into place? Like you're going to hire legal advice consultants to help you stay afloat compliance-wise? Yes. So this is not like something that's very tricky. So lawyers, I, I mean, some of them love crypto, right? Because they, they defloat around it, they make a killing on that. But a lot of lawyers don't like crypto because of the lack of regulation, right? Uh, of course, like already using but the trick is to, to try to stay like as far as possible designing product in such a way that the required compliance uh, is minimal. And if it cannot be in the way, then just like we won't do it. You know, like... Okay, so if I understood you correctly, you are looking to get legal help, but from the get-go when you're building, you are go not going to do activity that could later have legal implications. It's, it's a bit more complicated. So like we don't have anybody uh, full-time on the team that's legal yet. Yeah. But we are looking to either like uh, create a partnership like with a, a legal company that's based in the crypto. You don't want to jump into the waters that you don't need to jump into. So basically, if you know, okay, that's going to create a lot of legal discussion. Okay, let's not do it. Or let's not do it now. Okay, I see. So don't go sleep in the deeper end until you understand exactly. what's going to go happen. Okay, I understand. Right. Next question is, why don't you just build a simple DEX? Like, why so ambitious? Why so many traditional instruments. What do you see the benefit for? So it's a very egoistic reason, like that would be so boring and like so useless. It is also like fun for me, you know, like uh, to be working on all of those things. 